Dobry deň, mene zváte Raja Jelinska. My name is Raisa Jelinsky. Today, I'll be interviewing Donald Sonove, our fourth alumni of the alumni video series. Donald is a professor of materials chemistry at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He's particularly known for his work on a grid scale battery system that stores energy using a three layer liquid metal core. In 2012, he co-founded the company Ambry to scale up and commercialize this technology. He is also the founder of Boston Metal, which is a company that works to commercialize his invention in molten oxide of electrolysis for the production of metals. Thank you for joining us. My, My first question is, uh, where did you go to university and what did you study? So I went to uh, University of Toronto and uh, as an undergraduate, I was in uh, engineering science and uh, there was a different uh, streams there and I chose uh, material science option. And then I stayed on and got a master's and PhD in uh, metallurgy. At the, at the time, it was called metallurgy. It's now a material science. So that was, uh, that's where I went to school. And then I won a, uh, a NATO postdoctoral fellowship. And uh, that enabled me to go to MIT as a postdoc. And while I was a postdoc at MIT, um, I hired on as a faculty member and I've been here ever since. Thanks for sharing. Uh, my second question is, what was your involvement in SUSC? Well, SUSC, uh, I, I started, I was active in uh, the, uh, the Ukrainian Students Club at the uh, University of Toronto. And in fact, in, in my graduating year in 1972, I was the, the president of the club. And, uh, and then from there, I, I got drawn in some of the, some of the people uh, that I was friends with. Um, started to get involved with uh, SUSC and you know there was all this stuff there was there were really two two streams one was multiculturalism Canada trying to get beyond biculturalism and then there was of course uh, watching what was going on in uh, in the Soviet Union and, and in Ukraine and so that led to social activism and so on and uh, I remember I think it was after my second year I went to a SUSC conference, which was in uh, Thunder Bay that year, and uh, I was hooked, and I, I became uh, active in, in uh, SUSC as well, and, and then eventually, I think it was 70, 73, um, I was the national vice, or maybe Eastern, they had national president, and I think uh, Eastern and Western vice presidents, I was Eastern vice president. And, um, and I continued right through to the end of the PhD to be involved with the people. I have many friends there. Yeah. Okay, thanks for sharing. Um, what was your involvement in your USO? In? In your USO, in your student club. In the student club? Well, uh, I did various things at uh, the... Um, in, the early, in the early years, I was... Uh, I had some... Uh, position on the executive. Um, I think at one point I was uh, overseeing things like uh, uh, the guest speakers at, uh, at the, we would meet probably about once a month and we would try to have an agenda of, you know, f just routine stuff, but then we'd try to have featured speakers and so on. So I got involved in, in helping out with that. Um, and then in, in 71, 72 academic year, I was, uh, I was president and uh, we always had a big uh, gala event, uh, graduation, celebrating the graduates and it was uh, very, very nicely done. It was done at Hart House, which, you know, in those days, that was a big deal because Hart House had as part of its um, charter, it was for men. It was a men's club and women were not allowed in the Hart House. But things started to crack open probably around the late 60s. And so uh, we had uh, this uh, major event. And I remember we, we had a guest uh, speaker. We invented, uh, forgive me, and invited um, Ben Hanushchak, who was the uh, labor minister of uh, Manitoba. And uh, he came with his wife, and he, he was the main speaker. Um, and uh, it, was a, it was a very lovely affair. I want to jump back to, uh, you mentioned multiculturalism. Can you give us you know, some more details on what you did around multiculturalism? 
Yeah, so uh, it means something different here in the United States. But in Canada, it meant, you know, uh, if you go back to the early 60s, Canada was uh, Anglo, period. There were, there were people in Quebec, but there was no recognition of the French fact. Um, and then through, this, through the 60s, there was a movement uh, to recognize that uh, there was a French component to the uh, establishment of Canada, the con uh, Confederation. And uh, so then they announced that Canada was uh, uh, bilingual and bicultural. And at that point, uh, many of the other ethnic groups bristled. They said, okay, we'll, 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 we'll go along with bilingual, uh, but we're not bicultural. There, there is more than uh, Anglo and, and French uh, cultures here. And so there was a, a steady effort, every, you know, right from the, uh, the, the Ukrainian Canadian Committee and on down, and other groups did too. And, uh, but Ukrainians were really in the, in the forefront of that. And, uh, and they, were, they were acknowledged as having uh, tempered the, uh, the official uh, position on it so that it finally it morphed into uh, officially bilingual and uh, multicultural. And uh, so as a student group, there were certain uh, activities that we got involved in, participating in conferences and, and uh, uh, it, it, was, it, was, um, it, it wasn't a protest kind of a movement. It was rather one of advocacy. Uh, whereas when we were working on anti-Soviet stuff, that, that, was, that was more of a protest movement. And this was around the time of Paul Yuzik? Yeah, yeah, Paul Yuzik was senator at the time, yeah. Okay, it's an interesting time in history. Um, cool, cool to hear about it. Oh well, um, yeah, well, I lived it. Uh, so my next question, it seems like you have a lot going on. So um, what is your current occupation? So I'm a professor um, in the Department of Material Science and Engineering here at MIT. Um, and my area is uh, electrochemistry, applied electrochemistry. And as a professor, I have the whole uh, range, teaching, research, and uh, service. So teaching right now, I'm teaching 500 students uh, general chemistry, um, which I've taught for many years. Um, and then in, in the research, it's uh, obviously the electrochemistry is applied to batteries and applied to metal production. And then in service, uh, most recently, I was chairman of graduate studies here. Um, and then there's all this stuff in professional societies and, and so on. And you also have two, two companies, correct? Two companies, right. About to launch a third, but yeah, two. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so the first company I, uh, was uh, launched um, about 10 years ago. Uh, it was it, it, an, an invention here uh, about a battery that's capable of uh, storing uh, large amounts of electricity that you would use in tandem with uh, intermittent sources of generation such as uh, wind or solar. And um, so uh, it, it's based on liquid metals, as you mentioned in the introduction. And uh, so we founded the company, we called it the Liquid Metal Battery Corporation, which is a terrible name, but then eventually a couple of years later, we changed it to Ambry because I invented it here in Cambridge. So I took the front and the back off of the word Cambridge and there's Ambry. And um, so that, that company is still uh, uh, alive. It's a long journey from lab bench to marketplace. Um, it's not like writing code for, for a smartphone or something. It's a really, it's heavy industry. Um, and so uh, it's, we're, we're hoping that by end of the year, we'll have the first uh, large format battery. We're probably talking about uh, several megawatt hours um, in customer hands. And then the other company is Boston Metal. Uh, I, I invented this uh, electrolytic approach to metal extraction. Um, and I, I've been working on this probably for almost 25 years, but no one paid any attention to it because who cared back in the 80s about CO2 emissions? But now, um, 
people are really looking in particular at steel. And the Boston Metal is uh, on the path to uh, produce steel with uh, zero greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, so those are the those are the two companies. Wow, thank you. Um, and I know, I, I believe some of your courses are online as well. Um, for uh, under like openware. Open courseware. Open course, so people are able to see them. That's very interesting. Yeah, wow. you can you can watch you can watch on open courseware there. Um, just go to ocw.mit.edu, type in Sataway, and there it is. Perfect. Um, my next question is, how do you think this helped you in advancing your career and or personal development? Oh, I think it, it, it was uh, critical because, you know, um, I was in the School of Engineering and uh, I guess at U of T they call it the Faculty of Engineering. And um, I mean, in those days, it, it, it didn't have the, the, the breadth of uh, uh, perspective in the education. I mean, engineers, they learn to, to do the, the math, the physics, the chemistry, the, the humanities, the, the, soft, the soft skills, all that stuff. That was way in the background. So, so for me, being active in, uh, in SUSC, was uh, very formative for me in terms of rounding out my uh, my personal development, and then also uh, the, the the political. Uh, I mean, the, you know, we we we'd be at somebody's uh, place well into the wee hours of the morning, uh, and the conversations and so on. The, the, it wasn't it wasn't party time. It was all just convers people just arguing and arguing and. And it trains your brain. Um, and then there was also the whole business of organizing, which then cultivates leadership. Um, so I, there's, there's no question that, uh, that my uh, involvement in SUSC uh, helped professionally all around in ways that you, know, you don't think of. But, uh, it, it really is, it's cultivating leadership. For sure, uh, this is my fourth year on the board. I think I'm, I'm definitely seeing how there's certain skills that have evolved and certain things that I've learned specifically from SUSC. Obviously have not gone into my professional career, um, but I'm definitely, I'm hoping that it'll help me as well. And I think it will. Um, final question, do you have any tips for current students? These can be related to SUSC or the Ukraine community or just general career tips. Uh, I just, uh, just keep an open mind. Um, and uh, be prepared for uh, uh, surprises. And uh, I mean, wh when I look when I look at uh, what's happened in in my career, uh, things have come from the most unlikely places. So uh, I ha I plan I plan as much as to have a, a point of departure, but I don't have I don't have long range plans. Uh, but I just keep my eyes ears open, and. Uh, and be receptive and be prepared to, you know, change your position in the light of new data. Um, if you, if you become hardened in, in your, uh, in your beliefs and uh, dismiss evidence that uh, contradicts what you were holding to be true, then um, you're, you're, you're not, uh, not being smart about it. Um, but uh, it's, it's a great adventure, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, I just, I just, I just clicked 70 years of age and, you know, many of the people I know uh, from the University of Toronto, there's a engineering science uh, alumni group from class of 72. Every, everybody's retired. I'm looking at them. What are you doing? I mean, you know, maybe you say, well, I want to spend time with my grandchildren or something, but I mean, I'm, I'm starting another company. I'm not, I'm not slowing down. It's just, it's just, there's just so much, uh, mm, there's so much that can be done still. And uh, one, of the, one of the other things, to go back to your earlier question about, uh, about SUSC, um, 
one of the one of my taglines has become science in service to society and um and i got that that dutiful sense uh to um to work for society is that that's that's what we were doing in susk we weren't doing it because we want to prove a point we, we we wanted to make the world a better place in our own way and um I uh I think that that's that's what I would uh, urge people to to do because then they you know you're you're working for, for a higher sense of purpose it's not just a paycheck or it's not about uh, uh career building but rather to uh you know I've I've said the uh the golden rule is is it's nice you know I should treat you the way uh I would hope that you would treat me uh but that's kind of uh, transactional you know i'm i'm paying paying forward expecting i'm going to get a return so i said no forget the golden rule go to the platinum rule so the platinum rule is i'm going to treat you better than i would expect to be treated by you i'm going to leave the place better than the way i found it um uh, and uh and then that that inspires you to uh, to live a uh a nobler life Right, and I know that I guess going back to kind of giving, providing service to society, um, a lot of your research is in obviously, or some of your research is in batteries, um, and other research is also in kind of topics that will make the world a better place. I know in one of our student articles that um, you contributed to, or that you were interviewed for, you mentioned how you know the potential of battery storage to obviously the drive th drive forward. Uh, adoption of renewable energy and how that can you know topple dictators around the world where you know they oh, yeah. rely on oil um, yep. things like that yeah that was that was in uh the uh episode i had with uh colbert report that was that was that was a wild ride anyways um there's a jacku uh, it was great to hear from you and i'm sure others will enjoy hearing about you and your experience as well Slava Ukraini. Heroim Slava. Heroim Slava.